I'm giving away photography secrets. That is, that's what this video is. For context, I am an intimate portraits photographer. I've been shooting for about three years now and somebody sent me this. I couldn't screenshot the whole thing because there was a lot of text, but she was basically thanking me for the other kinds of content that I make and then asking these questions about photography. So first off, congratulations on graduating. That's really awesome. So the first question was about getting a new camera. Uh, and honestly, it really doesn't matter. I would say just get something cheap. Get a digital camera, spend less than $1,000 on it. Like if, if you have to spend more, spend like less, don't spend more than like $1,200. But I started with a really cheap camera. You don't need a bunch of super expensive or super fancy camera to get started with photography. I currently still use my beginner camera. It's a Canon M50 Mark One. It's really old. The Mark II just came out like last year. I think it's being discontinued, but if you can get your hands on one, that's probably really good. But honestly, any DSLR or DSLM, uh, that's, you know, relatively recent um, and is less than like a thousand dollars. You don't want to spend a bunch of money to start. I use this old ass camera to take these kinds of photos. Yeah, I'm like that. Like you can take actually insane shots with anything. So yeah, don't stress that. Uh, get something that you like that's cheap. I prefer Canons because they have really good color, but if you like Sony, you get Sony. Just something that you like that's within your price range. I do recommend getting a mirrorless camera rather than a reflex camera. So a DSLM versus a DSLR. And the reason is because, here I'll show you. Because mirrorless cameras actually digitally create this image on the, uh, on the screen here, you can actually change the image in real time and see what those changes are gonna look like. Like you can change the settings and actually see what the shot's gonna look like before you take it, which is a very beginner friendly thing to have. I like that aspect of it. I don't have to test shoot my camera beforehand unless I'm using additional lights. I can tell what the shot's gonna look like before I take it. it also works well for me because I have aphantasia. I can't visualize shots before I take them. I have to look at them to know if they're good or not. The next question was how I got in the industry and built clientele. So I shot with my friends. Uh, I'm an intimate portraits photographer. So, and most of my friends were very either sex positive or just sex workers. And so I just shot with them and we did like lingerie shoots and stuff like that. Um, and so that's how I got started. If you have friends that are down to shoot, shoot with them as much as possible. My first year shooting, I just, I shot with as many people as I could find because my goal was to be good. And if you're good, then you can charge what you want. And if people want you, they will pay your prices. If you don't have friends that you can shoot with, you can reach out to models. That's another thing that I did. You can literally just DM people on Instagram. That's not what I did, but that is an option. Um, I joined Facebook groups and uh, I would join groups that were like uh, photographers, hair and makeup artists, models, etc., actors, actresses, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I would join those groups and there would be listings where it's like, hey, I'm looking for a photographer for this particular project or hey, or you can make your own listing of I'm looking for a model for this particular project and you can say how much you're paying or if you're not paying, you can say that it's a TFP shoot, which is a trade for print or trade for photo shoot. And essentially that just means that you two are agreeing to trade your time for the photos. Usually people who are of even level, like, evil, like even social status uh, will do that or um, people who are just trying to build their portfolio may do that. Stuff like that, um, usually, or if the project's just really interesting and somebody is interested in it, they might agree to a trade for print, but otherwise, you'll, you just pay them, pay them for their time. Building clientele can be difficult. There's a bunch of different ways you can go about it. Um, the two that I did were I made a Facebook group and I also did social media, I did TikTok. Facebook group was basically just like a meme group or participation with people that I knew. Uh, and every now and then I would give away a free photo shoot where the shoot itself was free, but the photos were not. And so that get, they get to have the experience of being like a model for a day and have a fun shoot. But if they wanted to keep the photos and they pay for the photos. And that was one way that I started building clientele uh, when I started. Maintaining a Facebook group was really difficult for me. I kept getting distracted and doing other stuff or forgetting. I had a hard time like making schedule, scheduling posts and all kinds of stuff like that. It was really difficult. So I, I ended up like not doing it anymore. Uh, with TikTok, I just made a TikTok every day talking about my photography. I would talk about lighting. I would talk about cameras. I would talk about posing. I would instruct posing. I would do all kinds of stuff to just make content about photography and then tell people that I was a photographer. I had a website linked. I, I had my own website. I um, had a website link and everything like that. So people who found me and learned something would be like, oh, I want to shoot with him. Then they shoot with me. My first viral videos on TikTok ever were all videos related to photography. But yeah, there's a tons of different ways. You can uh, do sales. You can pay for promotion. You can do all kinds of stuff. The, the building clientele thing, there's an endless a variety of ways you can do it. Because making content has taken over so much of my life, I don't really spend as much time as I should on the marketing 
and the clientele aspect of my business. But if you Google my name, my business comes up. So it's not super difficult for people to find me. Every now and then I'll do a video like this and this is basically the equivalent to a ad for my photography. So that's how I built clientele, but everybody's business is different. Everyone's platform is different. And you really gotta find like what works for you and what your target audience is and all that kind of stuff. How do you and your client decide on the settings as well? I just ask them what vibe they're going for and then I find a studio that matches that vibe. That's really all it takes. If they want dark and moody, then we go dark and moody. If they want something light and airy, then we go light and airy. Last question's about pricing and pricing is a really touchy thing for photographers. We really don't like just giving out our prices to everybody. The reason is because it's really easy to like just copy someone else's pricing list and just do what they did. Now my pricing list is several pages long. The reason is because it's got packages and an a la carte menu and bonuses and all kinds of stuff like that. But I don't have a problem telling you guys the general gist of my pricing. The reason is because people could price like me, but they can't shoot like me. My shots is better. My pose is better. My hair and makeup arts is better. Y'all can't. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh... Allergies. So my prices for industry professionals are a little bit different than for everybody else because what they need is different. Like if you're doing OF, then you don't need like a leatherback photo album with 60 images in it. Like it's different. But standard pricing for my photo shoots is $400 to book the day. That means that whatever date that we schedule to book that date is $400. And then there's the cost of the products. So based on how many photos you want, what kind of packages you want, if you want any add-ons, stuff like that, the price can range anywhere between $1,500 and I think the highest that I've charged was like $5,200, something like that. And people might be like, what the fuck? But the reality is that when it comes to artwork, it's worth whatever you say it's worth. When it comes to creating a safe space for someone to experience their own sensuality, you can't really put a price tag on that. Uh, but I did it anyway. Yay, capitalism. My mentality when it came to that was how much do I want to make on average? And then I just built a pricing list around that. For example, if you want on average to make $1,000 per photo shoot, then you would make packages that are less than $1,000 and packages that are higher than $1,000. And then you just create enough value to make people want to get whichever package you want them to get. Like whatever you price your stuff at, you have to give them enough value so that they don't feel like they're being ripped off from your service. And that value can be in the experience you provide and the number of photos or the quality of the photos and the kinds of products or the quality of the products in the amount of preparation or the cost of preparation. A ton of different stuff can factor into the value of the shoot, but as long as they feel like they got their money's worth, you can price whatever you want. I hope that answers all your questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this miniature masterclass in photography and business. I will see you guys in the next video.